Everybody and welcome to Church of the Highlands. So glad you guys have joined us for this online service. And wherever you're joining us, we welcome you. Maybe you're part of one of our campuses here in Alabama or in the correctional facilities uh, all across our great state. Or, or maybe you're joining us from another state or even around the world. We are so honored and excited that you've joined us uh, for this moment. And uh, it's been a, a great couple weeks as we've um, jumped into Romans chapter eight. And we'll get there in a moment. But you know, thinking about this moment in time, we're transitioning. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. But this is the big turn, right, from Thanksgiving into the Christmas season. Come on, somebody. We're almost there. And uh, a lot of great things happening at church. Just It's gonna be a great month. Uh, we got some exciting news coming your way, maybe even this week about the Highlands Christmas services, and that's gonna be awesome. Hey, next week at church, everybody, Pastor Chris has an amazing message. You know, we've been in this At The Movie series, so we've had this online experience, and then At The Movies in person, but next week we're all back together, PC's in the house, and he has a powerful message that you do not want to miss. It's gonna be incredible. Hopefully you can join us in person at one of our locations, and that's gonna be awesome. This week we got First Wednesday, and even this, this week we also have, on the same day, this Wednesday, December 2nd, our Impact Conference, which is an incredible event. Uh, this year we have turned it into a virtual event, and really this has become a way for us at Highlands College, which I'm so honored to be a part of, for us to invest in leaders, uh, business leaders, church leaders, in every, you know, families, in every sphere of influence, to invest in leaders, but to also advance the mission of Highlands College. And so you can go to impactleader.com to get registered. It's a free event. Get, you know, get involved, be a part of the day itself, which is 9 a.m. till noon. Learn a lot as a leader, but also you share that and let others hear about what we're doing at Highlands College. And we're gonna talk about that all throughout the day as we are passionate about raising up leaders here and sending them around the world because we know the harvest is plentiful and God has great things in store. It's all gonna be great, but I'm excited today, as I mentioned, to kind of finish out these last three weeks, which have been all about Romans 8. And so I'm gonna just read the scripture one more time. Uh, Pastor Dino did an amazing job, Pastor Lane, last week, just unpacking the power of this verse, or these, these verses, Romans 8, 37 through 39. It says, no, in all these things. Now I wanna pause right there because we have been in a year, in a season full of a lot of things. There have been a lot of all these things coming our way. And uh, Pastor Dino talked about you know, pain or loneliness, and Pastor Lane talked about pain, and those are just two of the many things <laughs> that have come our way. So there's a lot of things coming our way, but I love this next line. In every one of them, we are more than conquerors. Come on, say that right now wherever you are. I am more than a conqueror. How? Through him, through Jesus who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death or life, angels or demons, neither the present or the future, any powers, neither height nor depth or, depth or anything else in all creation will we'll be able to separate us or make it personal. We'll be able to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What incredible scriptures that we can know that whatever comes our way, in 2020 and beyond, we are more than a conqueror. And it's because Jesus came, he loved us enough to come and to live his life. And through the power of his resurrection, we get to live now a resurrected life and everything we can be a conqueror because he conquered. And I love those verses and I love the fact that we have talked about pain, we've talked about loneliness. And today for a few moments with you guys, I'm excited to jump into this topic that has honestly been a big part of my personal testimony and that is how we can conquer Fear, how we can conquer fear. If you wanna write down a title, that's our title today. We're gonna to look into God's word and we're gonna discover how we can conquer those four letters, F-E-A-R, that can be so powerful in our lives. And I'll get to my own story here in a moment, but you know, I was just thinking about all of us this year and we talked about this a lot, but we can't, can't quit talking about it because we're still in 2020. And we're almost to the end, but we're still in 2020 right now. And of course, all year long, there have been so many opportunities for all of us to face fear. I mean, it's been around every corner. I mean, thinking back to March when COVID began to spread 
And for the first time in any of our lives, we were a part of a global pandemic with a sickness that we really still to this day don't fully understand. And of course, for all of us, I'm sure there was moments where we were facing fear, you know, quarantine uh, back in the spring. What a crazy season was, you know, I have young kids, you know, are we gonna go to, are they gonna go to school, not go to school? And now we're, now we're the ones teaching them in school. And maybe for you, it's, you know, not just that, but your job, what's gonna happen in my job? And how, how are we gonna make this work? I mean, just all those things around a season that pulled us completely out of our normal, um, every, everyday, typical, what we expect kind of life. And there have been so many chances in all of that for us to fear, you know, fear of the future, uh, fear of the, in the political world. We've had this election and it's created so many times so much fear in, in different ways. I mean, even toilet paper this year, guys. I mean, come on. We've even had to fear whether or not we would have enough toilet paper. <laughs> it's been a crazy season. There have been lots of opportunities for fear. And, you know, fear, when we talk about fear, and even as we talk about some of those things, you know, there, there's two sides of fear. There is a healthy part of fear that, you know, fear can be a biological response to danger. And when that happens, it's a way for us to, you know, realize that danger is coming. Therefore, we can protect ourselves. And that healthy, you know, healthy fear would be like when, you know, you see a kid or, you know, someone about to step out in traffic. Something happens on the inside and, you know, there's a fear because you know what could happen if they step out. And, of course, you do whatever you can to protect them. So there's that healthy side, but what I really wanna dig in today, and this is what's so important for us to really understand how we can conquer, and that is a spirit of fear, which is different than that natural kind of biological fear. That there's a spirit of fear that can come on us, and when it does, even, it doesn't really even matter what it's, you know, what it's attached to. It's like a cloud that settles on us, and whatever it is we're afraid of grows into something so much more. Oh, it's a heaviness, a weight, that comes into our lives, and it's from the enemy. I mean, Timothy tells us that, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, and when that spirit of fear comes on us, it takes whatever it is that we're afraid of and turns it into so much more, and the enemy wants to use that literally to destroy our lives. I mean, this spirit of fear is where we find all the phobias, right? I don't, I don't know if you've done this. It's a great Google search. You know, just to search out the craziest phobias. And, and what's so surprising is how something like that, I mean, I, I wrote down a list of them, just a few of them that I read that I thought were just you know, so crazy. And of course, there's like the, the phobia of spiders, arachnophobia, the fear of spiders. I found one that I had never read before, that some people have a fear of Friday the 13th. I mean, I know that's like a superstition, but there's actually a group of people who fear, and that just happened a few weeks ago, I think in November, you know, Friday the 13th. When they see that date coming, there's a fear attached to it. Uh, there's even a fear of beards, people that have beards, uh, which is interesting because, you know, there, there's the whole Santa Claus thing. I guess that's just, like, he's the ultimate fear, I guess, I don't know. Uh, there's a fear of mayonnaise, which, honestly, I think I may be in that group. I didn't realize that there was a group. I'm glad to be in it because I don't like mayonnaise at all. Uh, there's, of course, the fear of clowns, which I, I think maybe we're all in that group, right? So these are, these are things, honestly, I mean, we kind of have fun with them. But when you look at them, isolate them, you kind of think, I mean, how could anyone be afraid of that? How could that strike fear? But that's what a spirit of fear does. It takes something that may be in itself, you know, not worthy of fear, and it magnifies it. At the end of the day, guys, the enemy comes in to use fear as a weapon. And he's really not concerned about what we're afraid of. He wants to take whatever that is and to use that to paralyze us, to consume us. Fear is like a virus. It comes in and it grows with a goal. I mean, fear's on a mission. Fear's on a mission in my life and in your life. It has a goal to stop us from living the life God has called us to live. And I told you earlier, my testimony has a lot to do with a spirit of fear, facing a spirit of fear. I, I don't know where it started, but when I think of my childhood, I mean, I had so many things that had come into my life. That spirit of fear was in so many different areas. I mean, I was afraid of the dark. I was afraid of, you know, of, of small spaces. I, I was afraid so often of you know, being in, the, in, in social situations and not, you know, not feeling comfortable around people, especially in big groups. I don't know where it all came from. I, I, mean, I grew up in a great home, have amazing parents. I don't remember anything happening. I really believe with all my heart it was the enemy. <laughs> he was trying to take me out with this spirit of fear. And I remember one of the things that was so defining, and I think this may sound crazy like some of those phobias maybe to you, but for me at 10, 11, 12 years old, I mean, it was so real to me. And that was the fear of losing my parents. I mean, every time they would leave the home, you know, we'd be with a babysitter, maybe, you know, just for a couple of hours. I can literally remember as a kid 
being so terrified and imagining them being in a car wreck or something happening to them. And I would sit, and this sounds so sad saying it, I don't mean to be, but I mean, I have these memories of sitting by the window at my home, waiting for them to come home, and so terrified that they wouldn't. It makes no sense. It's irrational. It's the enemy. And I can remember being paralyzed by that. As I was praying about this message and even you know, what to bring um, today, and even we're about to get to all the good news about how we can conquer this, I just know with all my heart, in this year, in this season, but maybe for a long time, there are some of you who are watching right now and that spirit of fear has tried to come in and consume you. It has been paralyzing you for longer than you can remember. And it's about so much more than whatever the fear is. It's grown into something bigger. And it's grown into something that the enemy, a quicksand that the enemy is trying to use to stop you. And I believe with all my heart today, I'm here today for this reason, I believe that as we get into God's word today, he's gonna give us the power to conquer that fear, the power for you to conquer whatever fear that's coming into your life that's trying to derail God's plan for you. Come on, you believe that? Say amen wherever you are. Do not fear is a powerful phrase. It's a powerful phrase that's connected to the truth that we read earlier in Romans 8. I I love this idea of more than a conqueror, that the Bible tells us that we can be more than a conqueror in anything that we face, and what that tells us is this, We need the confidence to live out the truth of that. And do not fear is a phrase that we see in the Bible more than any other phrase. In fact, it's repeated in the Bible more than any other phrase because God wants wants us to know, wants you to know that we can be more than a conqueror. I think it's so appropriate that he gives us that phrase more than any other phrase. In fact, some some, uh, theologians say it's in the Bible more than 365 times, literally a verse about overcoming fear for every day of the year because God wants this to settle deep into our hearts because that paralyzing fear tries to steal the truth from us, which is we can be more than a conqueror in this area. Of all the the places that do not fear is in the Bible, I think my favorite, and honestly, I think maybe the most powerful of all, is we see that phrase over and over in the story of the first Christmas, in the story of Jesus. It's powerful, and I wanna look in Luke chapter one. You can go ahead and turn there. And I really wrestle with this, guys, honestly. I mean, because there's such strong opinions about Christmas. I mean, you know, how early is too early? And I just felt like, you know, once we pass Thanksgiving, I'm pretty much in a clear space. We can talk about Christmas today. It's a safe place for us to talk about Christmas. You know, and I, I know as we talk about it, I start getting excited. My kids are excited. I, I don't know about you. You know, we're, we're, we're hanging up lights at our house, and I know there's strong opinions about lights. You know, do we go clear lights or we go multicolored? I love, I love all the lights. More lights, the better. I mean, it's just our house. We're gonna be lit up. Everybody can see it. We may suck all the energy out of Birmingham. I don't know, but we love Christmas lights. We love Christmas food. I mean, eggnog. I mean, I don't know why I like it, but I just do. Just at least, at least a sip of it every year. It's just, you know, it's just, it is, it just, it just tastes like Christmas. I mean, I love all the, you know, turkey and dressing, all the things that go along with that. I mean, I love Christmas movies. I mean, even in the chat box right now, why don't you just jot down your favorite or type out your favorite Christmas movie? Because I know there's some, probably some Grinch fans. We got some folks who, who love, um, um, uh, uh, you know, um, oh, what's the, what's the movie? Uh, Rudolph, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. How did I forget Rudolph? My kids love the claymation version of Rudolph. Maybe it's Christmas Vacation. Maybe it's Elf, which is a hilarious movie. I don't know what your favorite movie is, what your favorite you know, part of the season is. But the best part of Christmas we can never forget, of course, is this Christmas story. And I I love Luke chapter one as we step into this season and just remember what it's all about, that we get to see that in the middle of this story, which is so fun to celebrate, you know, so fun to, to have all these family memories, we get to see that in the middle of this story, God was doing a great work as it relates to fear. Luke chapter one, verses 26 through 31 it says, in the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. I love this story. I love this moment. Imagining this moment, how powerful it must have been for Mary. It says, the Lord is with you. And overwhelmed, Mary said, you know, she was, she was greatly troubled at his words and wondered, you know, what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, and here's our phrase, he said, do not fear, don't be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son and you're to give him the name Jesus. I'm gonna say that name right there, Jesus. What's so cool to me in this moment, what's so powerful, of course that phrase, do not fear, which is 
connected to this idea that we can be more than conquerors, it's more than a phrase, it's connected to a power, a truth, is immediately followed by the reason we can have confidence in that phrase, and that's in the name of that baby, of that, of that, of that moment that was given right there, the identity, and that name, Jesus. Don't be afraid, why? Because his name's gonna be Jesus, and that name, Jesus, means savior and deliverer, which is so powerful because before Jesus ever you know, walked on water or turned water into wine, before he ever raised the dead, before he ever you know, died for our sins and was resurrected, the very first thing we see Jesus doing in his story is conquering fear, and he does it through his very name. You don't have to be afraid, why? Because you have a savior, you have a deliverer. You can be more than a conqueror, why? Because he has come to conquer sin and death and the grave, and that includes Fear, and we can receive that promise just as much as Mary received it, we can receive it today. His name is Jesus. He's a savior. He's a deliverer. And God wants us free of fear because he has great plans for our lives. The enemy wants to paralyze us, but God wants us set free. He wants you set free. We gotta put our hope, our strength, and our courage, our authority to have this promise in that name, Jesus. We are more than conquerors. In fact, that more than conquerors, just to give it a little more depth, in the original language, it actually is, is two words, huper and nikaio. And that word nikaio means victory. In, in fact, that's, that word nikaio is where we get the word Nike. It means victory. But that first part, the more than, huper, it means I mean, exceedingly abundantly above. I mean, what the Bible is really telling us is this, is that when we face fear of any kind, not only will we have victory, but we can demolish it once and for all <laughs> through this name, Jesus the power and the authority, the courage that name gives us is to step up to our fears and say, I don't have to fear. I can receive that promise of not being afraid because of what God has done for me. And honestly, guys, that's my story. And I talked about the first part and the fear that was so crippling, that spirit of fear. But I gave my heart to Jesus at 17 years old. And really the first work God did in my life it relates to fear. And it took a few months of really getting into his word and believing his word. I'm gonna share some of that here in a moment of activating his word, but within six months of becoming a Christian, I can't even explain it other than to say it was a miracle. I mean, this is the, really the miracle of my testimony is that something that was so crippling for me was broken off my life, and in Jesus' name, it has never come back. I can tell you today that I have received that promise of not being afraid. I've received that authority of being more than a conqueror in Jesus' name, and I stand here today not paralyzed by fear anymore, but set free to do what God has made me to, be, to do, to be who God has made me to be, and you can have that same promise. So come on, let's activate it. And then we're just gonna go kind of old school Bible study right here. And I told you there's over you know, 365 references. We're gonna focus on four that we can believe in, we can put our faith in, we can activate the word of God today. And it's gonna help us conquer fear. It's gonna help you conquer fear once and for all. The first one I wanna share, it's so powerful. It's from Exodus 14. We're gonna look at verses 13 and 14. And this is, we're jumping into a story, an Old Testament story, uh, uh, the, uh, the story of, of Egypt and, and, and is, is, of, of God using Moses to bring the people of Israel out of Egypt and into victory. And right now they're standing, in this moment we're gonna jump into, they're standing on the edge of the Red Sea. And there, it looks like it's, it's impossible what's about to happen. It's, it's like sure death. I mean, I can imagine at every level they were consumed with fear. But this is what Moses said. Moses answered the people. He said, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. Write down this first point. We wanna activate these truths today. Number one, we wanna conquer fear. We gotta stand our ground on that authority, the authority of the word of God. And I love the way Moses says it. The Egyptians you see today, that fear you see today, you're never gonna see it again. You're gonna be more than a conqueror, but to receive that, the first thing you gotta do, you gotta stand. You gotta stand as an act of faith, trusting that God is gonna work on your behalf. He's gonna work on our behalf. I mean, this reminds me of kind of a, a, a funny story. Maybe you've had this moment. If you've ever visited you know, a, a, a national park or a place where they have wild animals, especially bears, you know, when we went to Yellowstone one year, we love to camp, our family does. We, we drove out to Yellowstone, which by the way, is a long way away. We get there, we're all so excited. And we kind of get this orientation before we go out uh, on these trails from the rangers. And I, you know, I, I think it just was more, I'd heard this, but it was just so much more real hearing it from a ranger at Yellowstone. He just started talking about, you know, as you're on this trail, we have wildlife, we, we have buffalo, you know, we have 
we have different kinds of deer and elk and all these things. We also have grizzly bears. And every year, you know, people come in and to in, in, encounter grizzly bears. They come into, you know, those situations and there's a decision you have to make. Of course, the natural decision in that moment is you come up and if you see a grizzly bear is are you gonna run, which is natural, or the unnatural thing in the moment, which feels unnatural, is are you going to stand? It's that kind of fight or flight moment, right? And the ranger just unpacked this whole thing for us and it was pretty clear. He said, basically, if you run, you're gonna die. <laughs> and if you stand, you have a chance. Stand your ground. And the bear may come at you, stand your ground. You may feel like it's over, stand your ground. Stand your ground. And I've never forgotten that moment. And thank goodness we didn't see a grizzly bear, but it relates so much to that scripture and to this point. Fear comes at us like a storm. It's coming at us like a grizzly bear. And everything inside of us says, give into it, run from it. But the moment we do, we take that situation into our own control. And God is saying, no, in that moment, I want you to have faith. I want you to stand your ground in that moment so that I have space to work. So I can demolish this fear from your life. That's our opportunity to believe, starting right here to believe, God, you're gonna work on our behalf in this area, no matter how hopeless it seems, I'm gonna stand right here and I'm gonna believe with all my heart that you're gonna go to work. And that's what the word of God says. The fear we see today, come on, we're not gonna see it again. God's gonna fight for us and he's gonna do that by fighting inside of us, by helping us grow and learn and by giving us the power of his word. Here's number two. We gotta stand our ground. Number two, we gotta pray for peace. Pray for peace. For peace, Philippians 4, 6 is one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible. It says, do not be anxious about anything. That's easier said than done, but it's a powerful truth. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So God's inviting us, knowing that we're gonna have fear, anxiety, things are gonna come. As we stand our ground, he's giving us something to do. He knows us well, Right? And he knows we need something to do. What are we gonna do? We're gonna pray. We're gonna pray first. I want you to pray, petition with thanksgiving and present whatever it is you're requesting God for. And what you're gonna receive is, the verse goes on to say, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, it's gonna guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And I love this verse. I love those three things that it gives us right here. And these are action steps for us as we stand our ground in faith This is what we're doing. We're standing there and we're praying. That's the first action step. It says we stand and we are anxious. We pray in every situation. And prayer is like this. Prayer is addressing your need to God. At the very core of prayer, what we're doing, we're letting God know, hey, here's what's going on in our life. And if you've never known this, I wanna make sure you know this. God loves it when we do that. No matter how silly our fear might seem or how big the reality of the thing we're facing is that our fear is attached to, and everything in between, God desires, because he's a great father, he desires us to come to him with that fear, with that anxiety, and to let him know, hey God, here's what's going on, here's what I'm facing, holding nothing back. You don't have to dress it up, you don't have to make it sound right, God just wants us to come. It goes on to say, not only do we pray, but we petition, and I'm so grateful that Paul, the writer of this scripture, adds this second level, because it's always a part of our prayer life that it's an opportunity for our prayer life, but I'm not sure we always take advantage of it, and you know, a petition is a humble and sincere request. You know, our prayer is, hey God, what, here's what's going on. Our petition is, hey God, here's what we would love you to do about it. Hey God, I'm facing this situation. I'm praying for this miracle. I'm facing this fear. I'm praying for you to step in in this way and to help me see this differently or walk through, through this a different way. Hey God, here's what's going on. That's our prayer. But God wants us to go to the next level. God, here's what I'd love you to do about it. To humbly present that request to God. He loves it. And I'm so grateful for this last part. And it says, finally, you know, with thanksgiving, present that request to God. And that's a celebration, and that's a faith moment. And that's where we just celebrate in advance. God, I believe you've heard me, and I believe you're moving on my behalf. I pray, hey, God, here, here's what's going on. I petition, hey, God, here's what I would love you to do about it. And I wanna thank you in advance that as I pray, I believe in Jesus' name, you're going to work in my situation. God loves it when we pray with petition and thanksgiving, and here's the most incredible part, is even in that moment, in the natural, if we don't see anything change, even in that moment we receive an answer to prayer, and that's that last part of the verse. In that moment, facing that fear, facing that uncertainty, we receive his peace, and it's immediate. It's supernatural, it transcends understanding. What does it do while we're standing firm and we're praying? 
in that moment as we're waiting for God to move or to see that thing change, that peace guards our hearts and our minds. It's supernatural. I think sometimes we think of peace as kind of a, you know, ethereal or a weak kind of thing. No, peace is strong. It's a guard for our hearts and our minds. We're right here in 2020, still in the middle of a pandemic. And we're praying and we're asking God to move. And we're thanking him that he is moving. But you know what? In the moment of this pandemic, in the natural where we still see it, we can have peace. Maybe you're facing uncertainty with your kids. In the moment, you don't see how it's gonna work out and it's created some fear in your life. In this moment, you can have peace. Maybe we're still waiting on a doctor report to come back. Like we've been to the doctor, but you haven't gotten the report back. In that moment, you can have peace that overwhelms and pushes out all that fear. You know, we're trusting God in our marriage. We can have peace. And the list goes on and on and on. In your situation right now, wherever you are, you can have supernatural peace. So what do we do when we're facing fear? We wanna conquer it. How do we do that? By trusting in the name of Jesus and activating the truth of his word. We stand our ground. We pray for peace. And number three, we just object to the lies. The Bible makes it clear that the devil, the, our enemy, the advers- our adversary, he is a liar. And that's ultimately his weapon. And every fear is just attached to a lie. And he's hurling that spirit of fear. He just wants that cloud to come on us. He's hurling those fiery darts. He's trying to overwhelm us with that fear. He's trying to paralyze us with that fear. And what we get to do is we stand our ground as we pray for peace out of that place of strength. We just get, get to begin to, you know, those lies that would overwhelm us, we get to begin to stand firm and to fight those lies off, to object to those lies. And what do we object to lies with? Second Corinthians 10, five says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. We object to the lies with the power of his word. We demolish these lies by knowing the power of God's word. I love that verse. In fact, I'd love you uh, guys, keep it on the screen. Second Corinthians 10, five. I want us to read this together wherever you are out loud. And this is my prayer in this as I was preparing this. Even as you read this word, you would begin to realize the reality of the power you have in Christ. And that's not to live with these lies, but to object to them, to say, no longer enemy. My mind is closed to that lie. That fear, it no longer has a place. My heart, it's been removed, and now my heart is protected from that, and I refuse to give into it again. Come on, let's read that verse, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought, and we make it obedient to Christ. Hey, if you're not reading your Bible every day, or maybe if you've never realized that your Bible is this kind of a weapon that can be used to fight off the enemy, can I just encourage you? Get in the Word of God every day. Make it a habit. Set a reminder on your phone. Realize it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to read a whole book in a day, just a verse, two verses, three verses, five, 10 minutes in His Word. It's gonna equip us. A great way you can do that is, you know, grab a concordance or even, you know, go to BibleGateway.com or another great, you know, version app, a great Bible app. And just look up verses about fear. Maybe that's where you need to start. And there'll be an endless list of verses that you can just lean into and journal about. Just begin to take those in as a weapon and fight off the attack of the enemy. We do not have to live in fear. I read the one-year Bible every day. That's something we do here at Highlands. It's on our website. And I'm, I'm always amazed that, you know, the Holy Spirit gives me the right verse for every day. And so often still, it's a weapon for me to fight off what, what could try to come back into my life, a spirit of fear. Make sure you're getting in God's word. We gotta do that more than ever in these days. Come on, we stand our ground. We pray for peace. We object to lies. And here's the last one, and we're gonna pray together. We just trust in God. And honestly, this is the whole message, right? This is every point. It's the backbone of really our faith. As a Christian, this is where it all rests. It's not in our power to be a conqueror. It's not in our power to fight off fear. It's always in his power. So we have an opportunity every day of our life just to trust him. How do we do that? By putting our lives in his hands. Of course, we do that in salvation. In fact, I'm gonna pray for that in a moment, but this is a daily opportunity. God, I just refuse to live out of my own power because the moment I do, fear or anything like anger, loneliness, pain, all the things we've talked about, they're gonna become overwhelming for me. And I just feel it in my heart right now. You know, Maybe this is because this is part of my story that some of you right there in your living room, you've been paralyzed for months in fear and God wants to set you free of that today. What that's gonna look like is first and foremost, us trusting him. I give you this verse, 
If you've never read it, I believe it could become one of your life verses. Psalm 56, verses three and four. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. God, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. In you, God, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, and I am not afraid. And I love this last line. What can mere mortals do to me? <laughs> Come on, what can a sickness do to me? Paul says, to live as Christ and to die as gain. What can economic uncertainty really do to me? Come on, this, this earth is not my home. When we really trust God and we really fresh and new put our, our lives in his hands, we remember that no matter what happens, we're gonna be okay. Because the opposite you know, of fear, a lot of times we think it's just finding you know, a solution to fear, but really what we fight fear with at the end of the day is not just solving that single fear. At the end of the day, the most powerful weapon to demolish fear is our trust, it's our faith. I mean, as we do that in our lives, we're able to push that fear away and realize there's a bigger picture going on. We belong to God and he is for us and he is with us. I wanna pray for you and I just, I found this quote and in fact, it was actually in my notes. Pastor Chris has shared this before. Go ahead and put it on the screen, guys. I want you to see it as I read it. It's a, a quote by Corey Ten Boom and I just feel, you know, in moments like prayer, in moments, messages like this, as we face very real things, trust can be a fear in itself. If that makes any sense, like, God trusting you is like, it's a leap of faith. We even say it that way. And maybe that's been your fear. And I just love this quote because it confronts that fear, which I think is ultimately probably the fear the enemy would love to keep in our lives is to keep us away from God. But it just says this, and I know you can see it. It says, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. What a great place for us to finish this message and for us to go into prayer. If you would bow your heads and close your eyes. That trusting in God it's safe because he's a known God. We see him through his word. As we reflect, we can see his work throughout our lives. And yeah, there's uncertainty and yeah, there's fear. There's a lot of things we could isolate and you know, put our attention on. But the moment we let go of all that and we just put our lives in his hands, we're in the safest place we could be. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I wanna pray two prayers. This first one is for anyone who would love to trust God for the very first time that you, you know, maybe you've been around church, maybe you haven't, maybe you just found your way to the website today and tuned into the service. Now, I don't know your story, but I know this, God wants a relationship with you. If you're from the South, maybe you thought that Christianity was religion, it's not, it's relationship. It's not about a list of right and wrong, it's about a God who loves you and wants you to experience that love and wants to be a part of your life. In fact, he wants to live inside of you and make you brand new. The Bible says that when we get saved, the old is gone and the new has come. The Bible also says the way we access that is just confessing our sins and then receiving God as the Lord of our life, inviting him to come in and take control. I believe with all my heart, there's some of you watching today that are ready for that moment. Maybe it's a rededication, but even for a lot of you, for the very first time, if that's you, wherever you are, you can just repeat this prayer. Pray with me, pray with me. Just say, Jesus, today, I give you my life. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins all my mistakes, I turn away from that, God, and today I run to you. Be my Lord, my Savior. God, fill me with your Holy Spirit so I can be more than a conqueror, so that I can face everything in this life with you. God, right now, I pray for everyone who just made that decision, and God, I know that right now you're moving inside of them, and they truly are a new creation. God, I thank you that this is the first moment of what's gonna be the rest of their life, a journey with you, of you working in their life, you moving in their life in a powerful way. God, thank you today that they tuned in for this moment. I know their life's never gonna be the same. Final prayer, anyone who's facing a spirit of fear, this is your moment. I don't know what it is you've attached that fear to. Maybe it's a, kind of one of those phobia things or maybe it's an uncertainty or Maybe it is COVID, maybe it's the future, economics, job, college, school, family, marriage, kids. It's a million places. We'll put that right out in front of you for what's gonna be the very last time we're gonna see God step in and remove that fear. God, right now, I know all across literally the world that enemy's trying to keep us from receiving the truth of your word, trying to keep us from receiving the power of your word. But in the name of Jesus, we declare we are more than conquerors. Come on, receive that today. God, we thank you that whatever has tried to come against us, whatever that fear is, and for you, go ahead and just start naming those fears. And every one of those, God, you have come to set me free of that fear. 
it is broken in the name of Jesus, never to come back, demolished and destroyed forever. We stand our ground in this moment, trusting God that you've begun a good work. God, we even go a step further. I pray for the areas of our life where maybe a fear has been attached to a situation. I pray for miracles in the name of Jesus. God, we put those areas in front of you. We're not gonna fear, we're gonna have faith that you're gonna move in that exact area in a miraculous way and we're gonna turn our eyes to you, expecting to see it. And as we do, we're receiving your peace, objecting to lies and trusting in you. Fear is gone in the name of Jesus. God, thank you for moving in our hearts, especially for those today who gave their lives to Jesus. God, we celebrate that because we know all of heaven is celebrating. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.